It's powder coated part dance party time. That's right, guys. We do have our powder-coated parts back finally. So I figured I'd give you a little show. Show you a couple here. Here's our uh, control stick. Went with kind of a darker shade of gray. I'm gonna go with a slightly lighter shade of gray for the interior with uh, black leather seats and some black accents. So I thought that would kind of contrast very well. Here's the uh, torque tube. I think turned out nice. I was a little worried at first when I dropped the parts off because they weren't too, uh, in my mind, careful with them, but they just said, hey, put them on that pallet over there and we'll take them in the back. And I kind of expected them to like, you know, put them on a cart and tag them all. But uh, in the end, everything turned out nice. They did a nice job. And when I did pick them up, they were all packed up and wrapped nicely. Um, I had them tape off these ends so we didn't get any paint in or, or uh, powder coat on the inside there. Here's one of the landing gear mounts. Again, kept the threads clean. Uh, coated it all real nice. And then here is the front cabin cage, front wing mount, and so on. So we're looking real forward to getting these parts in there. So let's get started on that mixing tube in the back of the rear fuselage. Well, it was time to start assembling the control mixer assembly, and that was easy as just gathering up the necessary parts and getting everything in line. Now, like I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of the parts do come pre-drilled, uh, like this flapper on bell crank uh, arm. However, three of the holes are drilled the same. One of them needs to be drilled out to a larger size to fit that bushing inside of it. Uh, along with the nylon uh, bushings that go on there as well. So these hole sizes were not in the drawings initially. I did reach out to Tech Supported Zenith, and I did receive a sheet that had all the hole sizes on it, which made it a little bit easier, but I did have to figure that out myself initially. Now, once I figured that everything had to go over the top of that bushing, I knew I had to open up the hole sizes and actually mark the nylon bushings and then start drilling them. Here you can see I'm drilling out the, uh, the bushings there. They actually call them the, the, uh, the flapper on bell crank bearings is what they're called, but they're basically just a, a nylon piece that goes in between. Here we're assembling them, test fitting it over the uh, bushing. And again, you have two of those nylon ones as well as the bell crank and then a castle nut. So I'm just making sure all the pieces fit. And then I just put my castle nut on there just to kind of keep them from falling off. Uh, and then we start doing the final assembly after I drilled out that third hole. And here she is, guys. Here is the finished mixing arm, bushings, bearings, bolts, the whole works. I just don't have the uh, safety pin in there yet. But uh, all fit up. Everything is moving nice and smooth. Uh, basically had to drill that out to a half an inch. That's the size that it ended up being. Um, again, that's not on the plans, but uh, I guess you just figure it out as you go. So... We'll get that all snug down to the proper uh, torque level, get a safety pin in there, and then we'll get our end bushings on and we'll get that riveted in. We'll clico it in first and then rivet it in to both sides so that we can start closing this up and start putting the armrest on this entire section right here. Right here I wanted to make sure that the mixer bearing supports uh, had some protective coating on them so I went ahead and sprayed those in the shop. And then I uh, removed my masking tape off my nylon bearings and went ahead and proceeded with uh, assembly. All right, guys, well, we got the mixing tube flap assembly here all installed. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, being that this is the, the Zenith's newest kit, there isn't the full photo assembly guy. They do have some photos of a build online that you do have access to. They have the, uh, the parts list and they have the drawings, of course, but what they don't have is kind of an assembly order. And I think I talked about that a little bit in the last video. Um, and one of the things we discovered is it's really hard to close up this rear bench jump seat area because you've got to put those control rods on there 
and the way that this whole back end goes together, um, it would kind of preclude you from finishing that if you did it now. So what we're probably going to do is get all the subassembly uh, pre-assembled and we're going to Clico that all in for right now and leave it unriveted until we get these control rods in up into here so that we can then finish the riveting. Um, but we're going to kind of skip this area as far as final, uh, finish, excuse me, finish riveting for right now. And we're going to move on to uh, finishing up the wire that we have to run, which we've already ran, but we're going to secure that in the back of the fuselage. Go ahead and show you that now. Kind of give you a bird's eye view here of the inside of the fuselage. That cable runs along the side of the fuselage here. We're going to probably um, do something slightly different than what they show in the online drawings. And we're going to go ahead and make some loops and attach them to these stiffeners on the side and run those to the back. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and get this top section put on, clear code, make sure everything fits up nice, and then do that final riveting of the top piece here. Get those stiffeners in and uh, start working towards getting that uh, top cage assembly in so that we can work on mating everything up. So let's get back to work. Hey guys, in my last video I actually titled it the 51% rule. However, I didn't go into a lot of detail on what that means and I got a few questions about that. So basically what that means is that a kit manufacturer, when they're going to produce a kit, the FAA inspects the kit and decides whether or not the builder is doing at least 51% of the work to complete the aircraft. So therefore, the manufacturer of the kit can only do about 49% of the overall total work uh, to complete the kit. Otherwise, it becomes a certified or a complete kit made by the manufacturer. So when kit manufacturers are doing kits or even quick build kits, the FAA will come out, take a look at the kit, and determine, determine if the kit is actually uh, experimental amateur built aircraft, meaning that the home builder is doing at least 51% of the work. So I just wanted to clarify that. Sorry I didn't explain that in the last video, but hope that helps you uh, understand what that means. Well, with the control mixer installed, it was finally time to put the top on the fuselage. Now, normally this is a two or three person job. Unfortunately, I was out working late by myself. And with the bench next to me at the proper height, I was able just to slide it over and get it on top and then just work those, uh, the top in between the laundrons on the side. Then I just continued uh, finishing up all the riveting along the, the bottom laundron as well as the top laundron and finishing up some miscellaneous riveting here or there. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, sometimes you're going to be getting in a rhythm going through and then you pop a rivet in a hole that maybe you needed to leave out. That's going to happen. Uh, you know, others, you can mark them with a, a Sharpie or put masking tape over them and uh, make yourself a note. It might help you save you a little bit of time down the road of making a mistake like I did. Uh, again, uh, this thing went up and off the table a couple times, just getting a better angle on some of the holes. And what I finally decided just for moving around in the shop was I took it down off the table and I went ahead and put it on some casters and that made it kind of nice to work on and move it around in the shop and it became a one-man show at that point. All right, guys, another night has passed. It is 12.09, 9.20 Sunday here in the AeroWorks workshop and let's take a look at what we're working on here. We've got the front fuselage on the table, doing some last minute prep on that getting ready to mate it up here with the rear fuselage. We finally got all the uh, riveting done. Got the seat belt brackets in here. Some final riveting here down on the seat back. Got the forward arch support all riveted down. And just to give you an idea what it looks like sitting a little more level, now you can kind of see it in its normal form and shape. So, another productive week. Again, you know, when you're first starting out on a project like this, there's going to be a lot of research that goes on throughout the build. You know, I made a few mistakes here or there. You, sometimes you put a rivet in a hole that you're going to have to put something else behind later in the build, and, you know, you're going to have to drill that out. That stuff happens. There's no way to avoid it. Uh, there's lots of rivets on here, thousands of rivets. And you will uh, ultimately put a rivet in somewhere where... 
you have to put another part down the road. So no big deal. You drill it out and uh, you put the uh, part in and you reattach it. So we have a couple of those ourselves. We're going to be covering that a little bit later uh, in the build on how you can uh, deal with that should that happen to you. But guys, I appreciate you watching. Again, this is episode six. Uh, and I uh, hope everybody had a great week. Uh, we didn't get to make it down to the Zenith homecoming this year. Uh, you know, ultimately, we'd love to be flying this plane down to the, the uh, homecoming next year, but uh, we'll see how that works out. We've got some big plans for this airplane, and we are excited to continue the build. So, appreciate you guys following. Again, like and share, subscribe, and leave a comment. I do answer all the questions as best I can. And uh, we will see you on the next episode.